Felicitations! It is me, Felicia Day, and this is my podcast. Welcome, you guys. I am trying to keep this up in a good way. I'm just a little bit burnt out today because it is currently October 6th, and yesterday is when my project, my Audible project, Third Eye, released, and it has been the culmination of, I believe, five years of contracts and writing and delays because of COVID and then more writing and then delays and then more writing and then recording and then seven months of post-production and I have to tell you it's kind of anticlimactic today it's okay I know all of us have had a big project or two that we worked on and the same thing happens when you're on a film set and you wrap the next day afterwards you are just spent and you feel a little depressed And you don't know what to do with yourself and you're a little bit tired but you feel like you should be moving on but you don't want to know what to move on to and it's just a lot and that's all I'm feeling right now and I wasn't going to record but I was like you know this is a real moment I want to share this with everyone because this is the life of an artist you focus intently on something make it as good as you can figure out how to pick yourself up off the floor because no one thing is going to change your life and then you keep going the best way you can. And that's where I'm at today. I did have a Pokeball and that always puts me in a good mood. My Pokeball order, order, by the way, is white rice mixed with greens because I don't want the greens, but I get the greens anyway to feel like I'm healthy. All salmon, fake crab, edamame and cucumber and masago, ginger, and then some ponzu sauce. And then that's it. It's kind of a plain cheeseburger with lettuce, tomato, and mayo kind of order. I get it, but I'm a vanilla sundae kind of gal. I don't care about flavors. In fact, I get mad when I have flavors in my ice cream. I'll just be honest with you. I don't like it. And you know what it is? I don't like chocolate or ice cream. Okay, I need texture in my ice cream and in my chocolate. And the problem is that, you know, most ice cream doesn't have texture in it. I love pistachio, but I want real pistachios in my pistachio ice cream, okay? I have a sort of a Rubicon Valley of repulsion when it comes to anything between a hmm, a Kentucky Fried Chicken <laughs> mashed potato and a thick cream soup. You know what I'm saying? And that's that includes like a milk I'm not a milkshake person. Smoothies, I can get behind if they're a little on the watery side. But then when they're too, they're they're like between a spoonable and a slurpable. Oof, no thank you. No thank you, ma'am. So I'm like a plain Jane when it comes to a lot of different foods. And I have all these out. I mean, if you've listened to any of my streams lately, undressing, any of those, I've been telling you ad infinitum about my my, uh, health issues. And I'm working through them, you guys. I will admit that I am... I feel better, but I'm about to go to Europe in a couple weeks. So I only have a couple of conventions for the last, the rest of the year. I'm at road. I'm first, I'm going to MCM Comic Con in London. So if you are in the UK, please come say hi. It's going to be very exciting. And I'm going on a trip with my father, which I've never gone on a solo trip with my father ever, but he retired and I thought to treat him. We go somewhere. So basically, we're going to Copenhagen in London. I'm so excited. Copenhagen has been on my bucket list since 2018 when I thought I was going to Copenhagen, or 2019, when I thought I was going to Copenhagen for a, uh, before a convention in Gothenburg, Sweden. That ended up being not okay. I ended up going to Sweden in 2021, I believe, but that was in Stockholm. And I went straight to Stockholm, had an incredible time. If you can go to Stockholm and see the Vasa, which is like this ship from the 17th century perfectly preserved in the harbor they brought it up and they hung it in this incredible museum and you walk in you're like oh my god this is the coolest museum I've ever seen it's just like a literally a pirate ship in space it's it's amazing truly astonishing and Stockholm is just an incredible city I felt like I wanted to move there in a minute Nordic people seem happy because a lot of the support systems that they have as part of their government make their lives happier They pay a lot of taxes, but they get a lot in return. And it's really, really inspiring. It makes me want an EU passport, even though I think the EU passport doesn't work in the Nordic. Anyway, so I'm going to Copenhagen. And I had actually planned out my trip to Copenhagen years ago. 
So I have a bunch of bakeries that I picked out that some of them are no, no longer existing, but some are. And then I have a couple of reservations for really fancy restaurants with like many courses of food. And I'm still supposed to be on this diet, but I'm like, no, girl, you might not ever come here again. You need to eat that cardamom roll. Okay. So that's what's going to happen. And I'm interested, you know, I think my dad and I'll travel well. If not, I'll be home and that'll be fine. You never know when you're with your parents. I don't talk about my personal life a lot, but, you know, my mom doesn't travel and, uh, you know, my parents are together. They haven't been for many, many, many years. And my brother, we're not, I, that's it. I don't have a big family. Um, I have a grandmother who's uh, having some health issues now and all of that. And, but it's a very small family. So to do like a family trip is kind of foreign to me. So this will be interesting. You know, we'll see. Uh, my problem is that when you travel with someone, you have to have the same travel style. And my brother and I, as much as I love my brother, our styles are not the same. I have to, I want to get up immediately in the, bright in the early in the morning, find the best bakery that I can have, have the best breakfast. He's a roll out of bed kind of guy. He walks at his own pace. We don't have the same museum pace either. Like he's a reader. He like actually likes to learn at the museum. And I'm like a dasher. I'm like, oh, 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 that's interesting. Take a picture and go, go, go. I could see the Louvre in, Louvre in a day. He would take three days and actually learn something and be a better person for it. But at the end of the day, there's nothing worse than being the one without a headset learning about Picasso and you're waiting for that person who's listening to the whole thing and you're just like, I need to leave this hall. So as much as I love my brother, if we travel, I mean, we're going to travel again, of course, but it's going to be like, okay, you go do your thing all day and we'll meet for dinner. That's going to be it. I don't, my dad and I are very, very, very similar in that. We're both very type A, walk very fast, take things in fast, uh, a little bit on the to go get him side, but I do get a lot of my jeans from him. So we'll see. We could even drive each other crazy, in which case I'll be like, I'm going shopping today. Goodbye. You go. He does like to do the REI thing kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? He loves, uh, you know, wearing his phone hitched to his belt, kind of like a, a walkie talkie. It's not a great look. Everything he wears is kind of waterproof, you know what I'm saying? So we don't have the same, you know, style. He'd love to bike. You can't pay me to want to bike, okay? I'll take a scooter, maybe, but we'll see. He he wants to go for hikes. I could, I know, I'm going to say no, I'm going to pass. So I do believe that there will be times when I'm like, I'm going to go shopping, you go there. But we do like museums together, so I think it's going to be fine. I'm not over planning. I tend to over plan to the literally to the hour what we do. And I, that was successful in Greece because when you're traveling with a, you know, um, a kid, you have to be pretty ruthless about what you do. And I ended up like sloughing off like half the agenda that I had for Greece. But at the same time, the stuff that I did plan helped get us place to place faster. And I was like, that was worth the extra expense to have the taxi be ordered in advance and you know, take the slightly faster, you know, ferry, all that stuff. So we'll see. I am looking forward to it. But then my partner had hip surgery and it's been a very rough couple, like six, no, it's been three weeks and it's fine. Now it's getting better, but it's been a rough three weeks because I've been taking soul baby, soul baby stuff. And she's six, but she can't go to bed by herself because I am not the kind of person who can let her do anything that she doesn't want to do. I don't know how that will serve her in the long term, but she's really cute though. She's settling into her new school. It's a little bit more interesting and flexible, but you know, she's okay with it, but she does not want to go to school. She doesn't want to go and she'd rather just hang out at the house. And I'm like, does every kid like that? I have other friends who are like, my kid can't wait to go to school. They can't wait to be around the other kids. They can't, my kid could give an F about any other child. She doesn't like other children. I think I've seen two kids ever that she's like, I want to be with them. And they're usually like a little bit older, a little bit more outgoing. I don't know what it is. She gets along with adults. And someone told me it was like a, a, a only child syndrome and maybe combined with COVID, only being around adults for longer. She just doesn't understand why kids get, get their crap together and just be like adults. I don't know. I don't know what it is. She's a kid. I was never like, oh, wow. I was, well, okay. Here, I was homeschooled from six years old on. Like her age on, I never had a friend. So that's a very different perspective. 
I do remember being in preschool and part of first grade and having enemies, but not friends. I had a lot of kids I didn't like. I had one kid I was in love, like I love this girl named Michelle. She had long, like sort of Daenerys kind of hair. And I just wanted, I just loved her so much. I just felt this love in my heart for her. And I don't remember her reciprocating really. And then in first grade, I remember hating a girl named Kelly who had really expensive hair bows and matching, you know, really expensive clothes. And she and her friends were like clicky and I felt like I was not included in her clique. So I created the outsider clique with the girl from Puerto Rico that nobody would have be friends with because it was at Alabama and she had an accent. And there was also Marcus who smelled like milk and this other girl named Megan who had something wrong with her lip. And we like had a pretty tight stuff, but it was almost like I was running the gang versus like being friends with any of them. And I don't know, maybe my child is just as weird as I am. I would love for her to be that person who walks into a room and everybody's like, yay, it's you. And she's like, what's up? And she's super comfortable. But I think there is sort of this bias against introverts maybe out there where you feel like, oh, my kid needs to go to therapy and have some work done on them so they can be more comfortable around people. And I'm like, well, maybe that's not the ideal. Should everybody be like glad handing everyone at a party? Am I being defensive now? I don't, I can't tell. (laughs) So my best bet is to, unless it looks like it's a problem, let her be herself, let her figure it out. And she has to go to school because I can't homeschool her. Because you won't listen to me. You know, I tried to speak Spanish to her and she's like, mama, don't speak Spanish. Only Spanish at school because she learned some of it there. And I'm like, okay, let's sit down and learn how to sound some words out. No, mama, I do that at school. So she's so oppositional. And I was the most compliant person in the world. Like literally, I didn't have a sense of self other than what could I do to impress people today? So that was pathological on one end. And she's like the opposite. And I want her to be like that. Like, compliant kid, compliant adult, and I don't want her to be a compliant adult, but then I'm just creating a big headache for me in that she is very strong-willed, she knows what her mind, she knows what she wants, and I've given her enough autonomy that she feels like she can control her life, probably to an extent that she shouldn't. (laughs) So anyway, I don't have solutions. I will say that you should try, you know, if you have kids and you have problems with them, go to Dr. Becky on Instagram. She seems to be like a kid whisperer and always makes me approach things in a calm, thoughtful, empathetic way. Even though I'm like, I just want to scream, get out of the car. I'm not going to do that because I don't want her to be, uh, you know, fear-based stuff makes things easier, but it doesn't make a relationship. It doesn't foment trust. And it certainly doesn't promote self-confidence in a way that you are safe in your environment, right? So boy, I don't have a solution, but I will say that I'm trying my best. I hope y'all did check out audible.com slash third eye. It is seven hours of fantasy, comedy, entertainment, and I'm really proud of it. I personally think Will Wheaton steals the show. London Hughes steals the show. Neil Gaiman steals the show. I, I, you know, I kind of, I I noticed this. I, I wrote myself the same kind of part I did in the guild, which is I am the sort of the, the straight man to a bunch of weirdos. And I don't know exactly why you know I don't need to be the star it's not about me it's more about my reacting to other people but I feel like Laurel is a little bit more wounded than Codex and she is a little more empowered at the end I mean it's really nice to be able to write I mean I think the number of pages is the same as the number of seasons and pages I wrote for all six seasons of the guild so it was really cool being able to write all of that at once and just kind of figure out who they are, how can I pair people up, have really satisfying, you know, endings for them, but also bring them from a place that they were kind of broken and sad. And I don't know. That's what I like. I like laughs and I like feels underneath. And I don't know where that place, I don't know where that place lives. I want to do something more with the characters. I'm not sure what that is. It is mine. So we'll see. Um, But for now, it lives in the audible world. And I'm really, really grateful that I got to make it. And so yeah, life goes on. I have a couple of projects I'm very excited to do. NaNoWriMo is coming up soon, and I was so excited to do NaNoWriMo. But of course, I'm going to Costa Rica at the end of November with my family. And I am, you know, doing some other things. And I have a couple of conventions. So I have Rhode Island Comic Con and Supernatural Hawaii, Honolulu. 
And I'm like, can I get something done by the end of the year? Well, I want to, and I will. So I'm working on two things for the stage. I am working, we are workshopping a guild musical, which is pretty cool. We'll see if that goes anywhere. I'm working on like sort of a one woman show thing. And I'm working on a novel um, in the lit RPG space. But I haven't been able to work on any of them because I've been so busy with other things. So, I mean, those are my in the queue. I have a graphic novel that's coming out in two years, y'all. A little less than two years, but it is something. I was looking at the art and I literally just from thumbnails started crying at the end because I was like, oh my gosh, this is so perfect. So I really stuck to my guns for the artist that is working on this. And I can't tell you anything else, but I will tell you it is a pretty, I'm really, really proud of it. So, you know, all of it. I have resol- I have resolved that I'm not writing for Hollywood anymore. You know, it's just not going to happen. And just relieving myself of being in that machine and writing for that industry is so relieving. I would love to act in a bunch of stuff and I just hired someone to do that. I have gotten new headshots. I'm getting a new website. I'm refreshing everything to really start January off in a way where I can just live my new confidence. I was doing a Monster High thing the other day, like a promo thing. I played Gulia in that. If you guys want to hear me in that or in Fiona and Cake, I am playing Betty. And Betty and Simon have this amazing arc this season. So if you guys are watching that, please listen for me. And it's uh, it's something that I'm really, you know, excited to do. And so I was sitting there on the panel and one of the characters or one of the actors said, yeah, I really trying to harness my lead character energy. And I was like, oh, that's what I've been trying to do all this year. I've been trying to get sort of, and I have, I feel like I have kind of harnessed who I need to be and I'm really solid in it not to say that people can't knock me off my pedestal like if I got a bunch of bad reviews at third eye or like the internet gamers turned on me again I mean I would certainly want to retreat into my shell and never put my head out again and feel bad about myself but I do feel like I'm more resilient and I could I I know who I am and like if people say stuff about me or reject me I won't take it so like oh you're right I'm terrible I'll be like no, I'm not. That just wasn't right for me. So, yeah, it's, um, I feel very almost mature. Is that what I say? It's a little mature. But the minute I go in and I have to audition for something and I collapse in the car again, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll realize I'm not so secure inside again. But all the things that keep me grounded, like my kid, like streaming, like my community on Discord, like my family, like my friends, you know, those are where... You cannot, you, that's what you attach yourself to. So the winds of the world don't buffet you and just blow you off course. It's so easy. The world is huge. And there's a lot of things we have to overcome to get what we want. And if we are grounded in ourself, and especially as creators, if we know what we want to do, if we're sure of our voice. Um, somebody the other day said, this is the most Felicia Day thing I've ever heard about third eye and I was like that's the best compliment ever because it is that's my voice nobody else can write like that that's what you should be working on it might not be the biggest you know superstar thing in the world but like no one else could write that I did it and that's what I want to keep doing I'm just psyching myself up so that Monday I will get off my butt and get some new writing done now that I have my kid in school I have no excuse I have a lot of still press to do for third eye um you know it is a weird thing to be like, hey, it's audio for your ear or it's TV for your ears, which one of my wonderful uh, community members, Cleves Mill, coined, and I will steal for every uh, season, every interview going forward. It's TV for your ears, but it's kind of hard for people to wrap their head around. So I am excited to, you know, have it be out there. People will review it, hopefully cover it and just have the word spread about it. And then also not put my hopes on this being the end all be all. Like I, I you know, it's been a long time. COVID really delayed everything but yeah I've taken some time to get to where I need to be and that's okay but I'm ready to go so where I go is that's TBD I do know that I just read a book I guess we can talk about uh, a little bit about my recommends I did that before didn't I uh reading this I mean we've been doing our book club we read this um, book called Becoming Crone which was really awesome it was an urban fantasy about an older woman who was a grandma and her finding power and having a romance in it. It's a wonderfully written book. So if you guys get a chance, 
listen to that B- book club. We have a book club uh, October pick, which is Gun Dog by my friend Gary Witta. It has mechs. It's a super action-heavy thing, and I think everyone's going to love it. I read it when it first he gave me an arc, and I'm going to reread it just because it's a really good read, and we're going to all read it together, so join in for October. I also read The Fourth Wing, so I did an interview for Sword and Laser, and Veronica recommended it, and I had, I had seen it on TikTok, and it recommended, and I was like, what is this thing? And it's like, oh, it has dragons, and I didn't know it was a romance, y'all. I didn't realize that, and so the first half is kind of a little bit of romance, and I'm like, oh, it's kind of a you know, it feels kind of YA. I love the dragon. You know, it's a cool, ruthless world. I like it. I was into it. But I wasn't like, oh, my God. And the, oh, my gosh, you guys. The relationship takes off to the point where I think I developed a crush on a fictional character. Not since Thane and Mass Effect 2 have I developed such a crush on Zayden. And it's not even him, I think. It's that Violet, the main character, and I'm not giving any away, anything away. I'm not going to tell any details about, you know, what happens or whatever. But I will say that Violet is a character who feels kind of small in the beginning. And then she's just like owning everything. She is in complete control. She knows her mind. There's none of this BS where you don't say what you're feeling to somebody. And it's so refreshing. And it's just brilliant. So I highly recommend this book. And I think I'm going to reread it. I think the sequel comes out in just like the beginning of November. So I'm like dying to read it. I will say that if you are interested in RPG lit, Battle Mage Farmer is also a series I just ate up. I loved it so much. I think it's by Seth Ring. And it's about uh, an uber-powered, you know, savior of the world who becomes a farmer. And it's so well, it's just really fun and well-written and simple. You know, it's just one of those things. I love Stardew Valley, though, because uh, gaming-wise, I've been kind of hopping games with my friends. We played, we're making, uh, my friend Adam Vision and I are making little games in Fortnite, if you guys want to try it. One of them is Fortal, which is like Wordle, Wordle in uh, Fortnite, which is very fun. Um, we've been playing Baldur's Gate 3, um, on and off. Starfield I tried. I haven't been able to get into it, but I think, you know, I will. And Cyberpunk, I just started that DLC. Super excited to get back to that world. Um, and then there was the Fae Farm addiction this month. Fae Farm is like Animal Crossing mixed with Stardew Valley. And if you can play multiplayer, and if you want to play something on your couch with your partner on the Switch, and it's so fun. It's so pretty. We finished all the content they have, but hopefully they'll release more because it's just really fun. And there's nothing better than a good farming game. I think I, I, was, I did an interview the other day, and I was like, I'm a hoe for a digital hoe in a game. A hoe for a digital hoe. So that's my new <laughs> no new, new nick, nickname. Um, that's kind of what I've been consuming this month. I've been gaming. I've been reading. And not much TV. The problem is, again, my partner can't put the kid to bed because of the hip situation. So I go lay in bed with her. She is just not a sleeper, y'all. And we're waking up at 7 a.m. to get her to school, which feels late compared to other people. But it just feels very early to us because her other school was an hour later. So I have to get up at 6.30 to get the you know all the animals fed because who does it? I do. And then I get her up prior out of bed, put her... Anyway, she, I, the only thing I, I could do to get her out of bed is to play Horrible Histories, which is this really fun BBC show on the television. So she gets one of those before she goes to school. And then I get her out the door and it's just, oh, she, she will not go to sleep at night. I thought she, I thought with a long school day, she would go to sleep at eight. No, it's nine o'clock at the earliest. And then it's hell getting her up. And I'm like, there's nothing I can do. I turn the light off. I read. I turn, you know, no TV time before bed. I do everything I should to get this kid to bed and she will not go to bed at 8.30 or 8. Other parents are like, yeah, we turn the light off and they're around sleep at 8.15. I'm like, shut up. I hate you. So anyway, I get out of her bed around 9, 9.15 and I'm exhausted. So I take a bath, read a book, go to bed. I mean, there's no time for TV. I heard there's a new British baking show. I still haven't watched The Bear. Also, I'm still on strike, so I shouldn't even be talking about any of this. But it's fine. It's not my shows. Uh, also, speaking of strikes, I'm really excited to maybe next year get some acting work done. The As of today, the strike is still on. So we can't talk about our old projects. We can't audition. We can't do anything acting-wise. I suspect maybe next week the strike will be resolved because they're, they met Monday, Wednesday, Friday this year, this week. And they're meeting already again Monday. So the expectation is perhaps next week we can... But, you know, the writers just started working again. 
and they canceled so many shows so they have holes in all their things so nothing's going to get started until january which part of me is like oh great i have the rest of the year to get myself situated get some writing done before i really aggressively try to get some tv work and part of me is like i'm kind of worried about it because you know generally my tv work takes me out of the country and i don't want to leave my kid I don't want to be an absent mom. God forbid I get a series regular in another country or state. Like, what do you do? Am I going to move my family? I can't do that to my kids. So, you know, I'm kind of dreading that kind of it. But part of me is like, I'm so excited to get a new role. And I'm so excited to get out there again. Because I, I, again, I have this newfound confidence where I'm like, I think I could just audition and not worry if I get the job or not. Or not be so nervous about these people who are judging me like they're gonna judge me but they're judging me for not personal reasons they're just like does does this chick seems like this chick that I need to hire are they solving my problem and it's so hard to be in that place as an artist because you are getting rejected by for who you are essentially right your face your voice your height your skin color your hair color they don't match what they have in their mind whatever it is your age and those are things you can't control you just do your best work and when those are the times when I'm like, okay, I showed them what I would do if they hired me. And if they don't want that, I don't want the role because then I'd be going to be miserable on set. I did a movie, I don't know, about 10 years ago where I played this punk girl who was like super sassy and edgy. And I wanted the other girl's role, but the other girl who was, you know, she was cuter than me. It was fine. And in a, in a more cliched way, cute, you know, blonde girl. And I felt so uncomfortable doing that role the whole time. And I was like, I didn't want to be there on set. I felt like I was pretending. It wasn't an organic part of me. I couldn't tap into something. And I was like, you know, it was a small part, but I didn't, I I learned that lesson. I was like, no, you don't want to get hired for something you aren't good at because you're not serving them and they're not serving you. So yeah, we got to pay our bills. But if you're, you know, doing creative work, you got to not suffer while you do it or hopefully, (laughs) who knows? I certainly have suffered, but you know, I've benefited too. Sometimes you got to go through it. Anyway, hmm. Yeah, I don't know what else to talk about other than I hope that y'all are embracing the possibility of fall. I just started started feeling crispy, and it feels like the first fall that we don't have, like, masks everywhere. Please get your COVID and your flu shots. We have new ones. I'm getting mine done next week, so I, it'll be, like, fully activated for Europe. And I know that flu is already going around. Last year, I got the flu end of September, so I'm already a little overdue. I just haven't – I get thrown down for the count. Or when I get those vaccinations, so it's really tough for me. I get really tired and really achy, and it's really bad. I can't sleep, and so I've just been waiting for the right day, but I have to do it next week, and it's worth it, guys, because you don't want to lose three weeks when you can just lose 36 hours, but um, it does feel good to get up on Halloween. I'm going to put all the Halloween decorations up t- tomorrow, and I'm going to do a wrap party for the the third eye, just, you know, whoever's in town and it'll be a nice closure. So next week I can be like running start. So I hope all of you have some really nice celebrations around the holidays. I don't know if you guys celebrate Halloween across the pond as much in Japan. Do you guys celebrate? I don't know. I don't know how universal Halloween is. It's a fun one. It's never been my favorite because I'm just too lazy to dress up, but my kid is adore. I love Christmas because I just love dressing up. I love dressing up the house. I love decorating. I love giving people cookies. I love buying other people things. I love doing charity work. I'm going to be doing a uh, charity stream probably in November for Papa Yago, which is a bird rescue in Atlanta. They help me out with my grandma's parrots, and uh, they are an incredible organization. Not only do they rescue parrots and, you know, rehabilitate them and adopt them out, but when there are lost birds in Atlanta, they will take them, they will try to find their homes, they help tag the birds, find them, and and they give tips on how to raise. They love birds so much, and I think it's a really special organization. It's exactly what an organization like a charity, local charity organization should be, so... I will be doing a probably a 12-hour charity stream for them sometime either November, December, and that'll be it. Then we're, this could be January, guys. It's October. We've got like how many weeks? Oh, I'm going to be a jerk and be like, it's three weeks to Halloween. It's eight weeks to Thanksgiving. It's 12 weeks to Christmas. I'm making up these numbers, but they're around right. It's almost right. So... Uh, why did I even say that? I'm the worst. Okay. Anyway, um, 
you guys are the best. I will keep updating felicitations. I will write a newsletter next week when I can talk about something not Third Eye related. Because again, I'm tired of promoting it. I'm sure that if you guys could get it, you put it on your to-do list. Um, I don't know if, you know how many people have credits, but Audible's a pretty great place to be able to get stuff to listen to and this is a seven hour extravaganza to fill your ear holes with so if you like what I do pick it up and I will be back with you in about three or four weeks I guess after Halloween so I'll have some good stories for you and you guys have a good day bye